Our guest today is a Brazilian metal guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter for Angra, and they are ready to release their new album, Cycles of Pain. Let's talk about life, death, and the process behind the upcoming record with Rafael Bittencourt. Hi, Rafa. It's a pleasure having you here. Hi, John. Nice. Thanks. A pleasure for me, too. It's always nice to talk to you, man. My pleasure. This summer marked Angra's return to European festivals, such as Sweden Rock and Copenhagen. But you also visit Spain, England and Portugal. After so many years traveling the world, what still makes you feel excited or curious when visiting a country and meeting their culture? It's always surprising, you know, to, to, to meet different kind of people, to talk to them, to see, the, to, to eat the food. To, to to talk stuff, I mean, random stuff, to know what concerns them. M many people, some of the people are uh, concerned about Brazil. They ask me about politics in Brazil. Some other ask me about the beaches and how is life. And I'm also curious, you know, about their lives. And so it's, 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 it's always, always nice and surprising to be in different countries and touring, bringing our music to so many different cultures is just it's exactly what motivates us to continue you know uh i believe my inspiration comes from seeing people and talking to people and playing my music on this exchange you know it's like it's exchange of energy is something that really really inspires us to keep making music you know Now we're talking about the new album. You guys teamed up again with producer Dan Ward, who worked on Angra's classic albums such as Rebirth and Temple of Shadows. You haven't worked together since 2006 when Aurora Consurgence came out. But what old skills and new tricks has Dennis brought to this new work? Well, I think I think Dennis is now much more relaxed, you know, during the whole process. He he's also a musician, right? So he he understands how important it is to preserve the musician's dynamics, you know, the the mood, the atmosphere inside the band. So we felt him like a sixth member, and that was, I think, one of the secrets of of the fact that we could really capture all our emotions, all the things that we wanted to deal uh, in this album. And so he was very, very concerned on arrangements, on rounding up the songs, the structures and everything, but also keeping the excitement through the production because it's very, very usual that you start to get worn out of excitement during the process of recording because it's a very stressful it's very tiring so he understands that so he doesn't want to waste too much time on tracking you know on each track he wants to 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 have that the energy of excitement more than like being really really tight to every detail and he's very very good on engineering also the overall sound he really really wants to capture a lot of the harmonics in the guitar uh and and he loves you know like to 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 add lots of colors and finding room to all of those textures and sound colors i think it, he became like one of the best doing this because it's always very very hard to record lots of instruments, lots of tracks, and they start colliding in harmonics, in ranges, in sound range. So finding room to all of that, it's it's very hard. Angra is a band that has a wide range of dynamics too. I mean, we play very powerful and then soft. So to find uh Uh, uh, to find a good way to balance all these different dynamics is always, it's not for anyone. And I think he's very skilled on this. So we're very proud of, of having worked with him. Nice. And indeed, it is a very colorful album. 
But before talking about the concept, I would like to highlight the tributes that the new album pays to the history of the band. From the verse of an old classic to the references on the cover art that goes through the entire discography, not to mention the video for Ride Into The Storm. And when we talk about each moment in Angra's history, you are the witness present in all phases and records. Was the pandemic and the songwriting of this album a time of reflection to realize the impact of the band's legacy? I think so, yeah. I mean, after we've released Omni, after that, Andre Matos departed, I mean, from this world, right? Passed away. And also we had some personal losses and then came the pandemics. And during, I mean, the, the end of the pandemics, we celebrated 30th anniversary without having the opportunity to celebrate it with the, with the audience uh, on tour. So we had a lot of, of nostalgic emotions contended during this uh, process of writing the songs. Well, when, when Andre passed away, I realized how important he was in my life and in my career. Because, because of him, because be, together with him, I started Angra. And I've learned a lot from him that till now I use as a composer, I use as a musician, either as an artist or as a person to, to think about a career, you know, like the, the strategy. So concepts and stuff. And... Yes, a sense of nostalgia and respect to the legacy arose very strong. After Omni was released, you had an idea for a sequel of this story. But that period before the pandemic, as you said, was a very emotionally <clears throat> heavy time for you and plans changed. This new album has a concept very linked to grief. And I heard once that longing for someone who left is the presence of absence. How has this presence during the process of making the new record helped you deal with your own cycle of pain? Yeah, I mean, I had lost my father too, which which brought an enormous uh, feeling of emptiness, you know, the presence of the absence, but also gave a lot of depth on how we see life, you know, the way we see the work, the way... We want things to impact on people, but also we wanted to create a bond of intimacy with the crowd. What I mean is we wanted, we wanted to have that depth. I believe, and this is very clear for me, that what I want the songs to have is depth. More than sophistication, more than the amount of notes, more than the quantity of musical elements, the quality quality and depth and how is that that for that is it, it's not easy you need to try to break all the defenses from your crowd showing that you have no defenses so recently i was answering to a journalist who asked me about why do we write power metal songs and then we write a brazilian song in the middle and when then we write a progressive song why is that well one of the reasons is that we want to be honest to the crowd, like really showing how's the music and the musical environment around us. So when we play the Brazilian kind of groove, we invite the people to know who we really are. How's this atmosphere around us? So inviting the people to our, let's say, non-metal uh, vibes, we also conquer the, the trust so they open their defenses and we create a very, very intimate bond with the audience. And listening to the record, I can see that the album, it knows how to explore the mix of what Angra is. From the Latin arrangements to the power prog riffs, as you said. And Fabio is incredible with his different approaches. And the special guests explore Brazilian and classical music in a really good balance. How do these voices capture the lyrics? of cycles of pain. It is very natural. Everything we've done in the album, in all our albums, musical wise, is the natural forces that we express, you know, nothing that we really need to, to make too much effort, you know. It's different 
ways of playing, different ways of feeling music in general. And Fabio is a Latin person. He's from Italy. And I think that creates a huge bond. So even when we start writing Brazilian music with different grooves that might sound weird for many people, for him, especially after 10 years working together, he he can really, I mean, find way because he's very skilled on on creating different voices and different ways of singing. So that's very natural for him too. He, after the pandemic, he's singing even better. I mean, he really has grown as a singer also during the pandemics, which is very good for us. So he wanted to express different ways of singing and different ways of interpreting the melodies and the lyrics. It was even more natural. We just started to write stuff that we wanted, you know, things that we were talking about during the rehearsals, things that we were speaking about started to flow naturally in the lyrics. So, and after a while, we saw this common thread that was connecting all the songs. And we realized it was the, the word pain and grief and that sense of loss and that bottom line that pain is part of life that comes as a cycle. It was like very clear to us that there was a common thread or a com natural concept without us even thinking about it previously. Kiko Loreiro, the band's former guitarist, will play one song in the new album just as he did in the previous one. Kiko once talked about the artist who influenced him, and if he evaluates his career, the person who most influenced him in music is you. Because of your musical partnership and friendship in the more than 25 years that you worked together. But for you, what was Kiko's role in your evolution as a musician? First of all, I think he is the best guitar teacher that I have ever had because I learned about the guitar a lot from him. And I remember we have exchanged a lot of, of information about composition and about songwriting and about guitar playing. And I think this was a very, very great exchange because I wouldn't be the guitar player I am without having Kiko there with me showing what's the guitar about from the basic to the sophisticated, you know. Um, yes, he's also one of my biggest musical influences and reference because Kiko is a huge star and he knows how to rule his career. And this is a very special skill because being a, music, a professional musician is not only about knowing about music and being talented or being a good player. It's also knowing what and how to do with your resources, okay? So yes, he's a huge reference and still a friend. We, I'm, I feel happy, very touched that he mentioned me in an interview like this. And I think it's the same here. Uh, he's a great inspiration. In the last two years, you challenged yourself again and started having a weekly video cast on YouTube, talking to many different artists, most of them musicians and focused mainly on national names. This frequent contact with many different genres of music has been an overdose of Brazilian music in your life. Do you feel that this new experience made you connect even more with your own country? Oh yeah, certainly. Amplifica is the name of my channel, is something that started a little bit as a therapy, but also with some intention of being a professional thing. Because during the pandemics, concerts and public events in general were seized, and I didn't know what to do with my life. Uh, I wanted to write a solo album, but here in Brazil, it's, it would be very hard. Uh, I wouldn't target the Angra crowd, on my solo albums, because I wanted to go very, very different from this. So the only crowd that I had, I would disappoint. And I would have to, to gather a new crowd that has always seen me as a metal guitar player from with a strong stereotype that metal guitar players are seen by other audiences. So I said, okay, 
it's fun talking about music. It's something that I would like to do as a therapy, but it's also something that I can create a new fan basis, you know, speaking and showing myself, presenting myself to different audiences. And that's what I've done. And I've learned and I've been learning a lot from this. It's been two years now, became very successful here in Brazil. Thank God. It's a constant learning. You know, it's a constant learning. I sit down and talk to hip hop uh, artists, rap artists, Brazilian pop music, music styles that I would find shitty before talking to these artists and learning that I have much more in common with them than I have ever thought. Yes, it, it became a huge school for me for understanding different perspectives about music, about career, about the music scene, about how to deal with the music scene and your career and the struggles that every artist in different genres they, they do. It's been very, very nice. 15 years ago, your first solo album was released in a period of personal changes and at a time when Angra's future was uncertain. The album was entitled Brain Warms 1, and many fans wait and ask for a part two. But looking at Angra's work after 2008, songs like Silent Call and Bot of My Soul have your voice and signature. Can we say that the continuation of your solo career started to be distilled more intensely within Angra? Or do you still feel that the Rafael in Bittencourt project is something totally different? I decided to separate things, okay? On Cycles of Pain, I don't sing any solo song. And I will keep this to myself. I still have songs that were featured in Cycles of Pain that I will probably finish and produce into some sort of brainworms too. I was stuck with the idea of uh, bringing out brainworms 2 as a full length album, but now I'm thinking of releasing an EP with three songs, you know, because then I can see myself closer to the conclusion of this plan. Brainworms 2 was always meant to be a more personal thing, you know, like all the songs, they have lyrics, that talk about personal memories. This is something that I wouldn't do in Angra because Angra, when I write, I write to be the voice of everyone, to be sang by someone else, to touch a crowd that have some expectations. So it's not about myself. And yes, when I when I released Bring Arms One, my first beating group project, I felt more encouraged and and more confident to record a song with Angra and to continue this, you know, this this but Angra is already too weird for people with a too wide range of styles, you know, in the same record. And having different a different voice singing would make it even weirder for people to understand what's about. So in this record, Cycles of Pain, I I I kept myself as a guitar player a composer and lyricist, which is already a lot. And I have plans of recording the Brain Worms too pretty soon. Wow, great news. Angra's current lineup has a very real synergy on stage and behind the scenes, as we can see in videos and on social media. Like every band, you've gone through difficult times and dealt with lineups where the atmosphere wasn't that easy. Nowadays, how does having this pleasant mood reflect on the way you feel about being in anger? This is a natural thing, you know, uh, and a consequence of a lot of learnings. But what I can say is that nowadays, it's the best moment for me to be in a band, you know. Be in anger nowadays is something that pleases me, that brings me comfort, brings me peace. Everyone is facing the same direction. Everyone respects each other a lot and admire each other a lot. So there's this very smooth and nice bond of friendship, admiration, and respect. It's just nice to be there. And this is very inspiring too, because when you're, when you're on stage or when you're backstage or when you're traveling with the guys, and the energy around you is smooth, you're not too stressed. You get more inspired by writing stuff. You get more, you find more room in your head to express yourself, you know, in a good and positive way. 
You commented on something recently that I had never noticed. Your stage presence is inspired by the way Malcolm Young behaved live. And after that, I started to see the similarity. When you think about the teenage Raphael who grew up listening to ACDC and dreamed of being a musician, what do you still keep from him to stay inspired and continue your own journey? A good question. Um, well, I think Malcolm is consistent. He knows how to let everyone else shine. I think it's important in a band to really sit back sometimes and and see what's the collective brightness that we create, you know? I really like to think that people would have this overall impression that Angra is a very beautiful and powerful band on stage as a collective thing. And not like a bunch of individuals or artists trying to show off. You know? So you have to bring the audience. You have to look at their eyes. Uh, obviously, Malcolm is not the only one that inspires me. But I see that Malcolm is very uh, consistent on the way he writes music and the way he, you know, he rules the band. He is probably the leader there but it's not the leader that wants to be on the spotlight. He wants the band to be the best band in the world. And I have that same feeling. I want Angra to be the best band in the world, no matter what. Not that the, all the spotlights on me. I want the spotlight on everyone. So people who have that impression that we are a whole and not a bunch of talented individuals, you know. Angra's new album, Cycles of Pain, comes out on November 3rd via Atomic Fire Records, and it is a beautiful and touching record. My favorite song at the moment is Faithless Sanctuary, and I hope the fans will enjoy the full album. If you want to know more about the band, such as news and upcoming live dates, search for Angra Official on all social networks. Hafa, it was a pleasure to talk to you again, and I hope you enjoyed this interview. Would you like to leave a final message? Yes, John, thank you for the interview. It's always nice to talk to you. Yeah. Um... Um, looking forward to see what what uh, people are there in, in Finland and all over Europe will think about the album. I see you on tour, hopefully soon. Yes, sir.